Mountain Man Medical has name brand proven trauma medical supplies with a price match guarantee to ensure you get the right gear at the right price. Check them out at get-asp.com slash mountain man. This is more of a safety and just situational awareness kind of thing. If you're involved in a high volume of fire, like the temperature right now is moderate, it's not bad. But if you're doing these types of drills and you're doing them regularly, you're doing full auto drills, you're doing suppressed, you have to be concerned about the chamber temperature. That chamber temperature can get so hot that it can actually sympathetically ignite the powder in the casing and fire the shot. That's called a cook off, right? Now it doesn't happen very often, but when you're working these guns hard, particularly in this type of environment, it can, it can very well happen. All right, so a couple things. Um, to very quickly start to cool down the temperature inside of the chamber, all I really have to do is vent. So I didn't unload, I just vented. Getting this air or getting this opening allows that hot air to start to escape. And then it will dramatically decline in temperature to the point where it's now well below the safety threshold. And then all I have to do to get ready to go again is just hit that bolt catch. Okay, so if you're involved, if you're doing training like that, it's not necessarily a bad idea to vent for that reason alone. And I have had three guns cook off in training classes. Luckily for us, you know, good, good attention to detail as far as your muzzle discipline is concerned. So without doing anything, ah, you did something, Steve. Without doing anything, look at your muzzle, where it's at right now, right? So when it's hanging, where is that muzzle pointed? Because when you have a cook off, that's wherever the muzzle, that's wherever your muzzle is pointed is where the bullet's going. So three cook offs in classes, they were a nice controlled environment. I've seen about five or six on active duty, right? And the worst, well, the worst was probably the one that went off right by my head. But the worst, as far as like damage, was a good friend of mine. We were doing, rehearsing for a hot extract and our extract got compromised. So now we have to get out. And as we're, as we're exfilling, we're in the jungle. And as we're exfilling, we had to go down this hill to get to the river to get extracted by the boat. So the helos came in, bad shit happened, had to exfil to get to our secondary extract, which is where the boats were coming. And my friend Jason, uh, the, the, the grade was pretty steep. So he's holding on to a tree limb with his right hand. His rifle is slung in front of him. We just got done going through about five magazines on a contact. So the guns are hot. And as he's going down, I literally am above him. So like he's a tall guy, he's like 6'2". And so when I'm above him, I'm looking like literally at the back of his head. He was so tall. And um, what I saw was I saw him grab and then I saw him slip. And he slipped because the mud was so bad and there was about three other guys that had gone down before him. So it just created this like slip and slide going downhill. So he grabbed this tree limb with his right hand and as he slipped, he caught his balance. And then as he caught his balance, boom, boom, boom. Three shots, right? Two of them went right through his foot. The third one went right down past him and took out the corpsman's floppy hat. The way the guy was, the, the way the guy was, uh, was um, his, um, his head orientation, the round had gone through the top of his foot, through the toe of his foot, and then the, the third round was right here. But Alan, who was the corpsman, was down below him. And the round went straight through and just went through his floppy hat, missed him completely. Like it went through the brim of his floppy hat. So, well, we had to medevac Jason. Uh, that was seeing two, two, three rounds through a foot. That was pretty, uh, pretty nasty.